Hey, I am Joe Blizzard. I'm the STEM teacher here at Roper Mountain Science Center. And we're going to talk to you about waves today, um, the, the classification of waves and characteristics of them. And we're going to frame it up um, in the realm of communication. And speaking of communication, you're probably wondering, um, why are you talking through that really old phone that has clearly a garden hose connected to it. And uh, well, this is something that we used to use in an old lesson that we did with elementary school students. And um, so there is a hose pipe. There is another um, phone at the end of it. And you can talk through it. Sound waves move through the, through the hose to the other phone and you can have a conversation. It's really cool. And like I said, we're going to talk about communication, but this is not the communication that we use, is it? So, um, we're going to talk about the communication you're used to, and that is wireless communication, because wireless communication works on the concept of waves. It's because of waves and the movement of energy that way. And we have something really cool to show you. This is something that we picked up from the Exploratorium, um, but this is a really cool device that we set up. So what it is, is we have, and let me make sure I'm all framed up here. All right, what we have is we have a sound source. All right, it's really loud, so I won't leave it on too long. Um, but usually, so it goes to the speaker usually from this card. It reads it, sends it through the speaker. We get sound waves out. Um, but we are taking that electrical impulse and sending it through here to a light bulb, that an LED light that is then sending it out into just the, the room here. And on this side, we have a not connected speaker. So it's not plugged into our sound source. And we have a solar panel connected to it. And when I aim the solar panel down, the music comes through. The, um, well, the uh, light impulses turn back into electrical impulses and come through this speaker and the sound waves come out of this speaker. And it's just really cool. And this is the basis for a lot of the um, communication we use every day. Speaking of, I have something to set up because we are going to move to talk about waves in a way that we'll be able to explain exactly what's happening here. But, um, while I am setting this up, I want you to think about something. Uh, what is your favorite type of wireless communication device? A favorite wireless device that sends information. It doesn't have to be something you talk on, but it can be something that you get information from that is not connected to the source that is sending that information. All right, so just think about that, and I will get this set up. All right, all right, that is ready to go. So you probably thought about things like cell phones or um, Bluetooth speakers or, uh, or Bluetooth headphones or Wi-Fi, game systems, all those things. And those are all examples of things that work in a very similar way of our light-controlled speaker that I showed you just a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago. All right, so let's talk about waves. So I have this really cool thing here we call a analog wave machine. It's just made from a really long ribbon and some um, wooden skewers and some beads. Um, and when I stretch this out, what I can do is I can take, so I'm down here, see my hand? Um, you can see when I put energy into one of the skewer bead things here, it goes down the line from one to the next to the next. You can see it's really cool on there. We can change, oh, let's change views. We set this up so we can see down the line here. All right, so there we go. So let's set this up and take a look. And you can see now, I can let you see the full length of it as the energy moves down the line. You can kind of see it's going from bead to bead. And energy is the operative word here. We're moving energy from this side of the um, wave machine to that side. And we're not actually moving the skewers and beads down there and bringing them back. We are sending that energy from one to the next to the next. And, if we, and it happens in a repeating pattern from one to the next to the next. And that is what waves are. Waves are, if we can show the slide, waves are repeating patterns of motion that transfer energy from one place to another. So we're not moving the thing that is moving as a wave, but we're moving the energy from one place to another. And I will get this ready for when we use it later. All right, so now, that's what waves are. So let's focus in on the different types of waves that happen over here because we had two very distinct types of waves that were happening here. So from the speaker, we had sound waves that we got to our ear, we interpreted as sound. And from the LED light, we had some light waves that were then 
um, sent to the solar panel that were then transferred over to the speaker. All right, so that, let's, let's focus on uh, sound as a part of that. So um, I want you to think about something. So I have this thing I want to show you, a couple things over here, but while I'm getting these out, I want you to think about this. What, what do sound waves move through? Um, like what kind of what kind of things do they move through? Can they move through the air? Can they move through liquids? Those kind of things. Can they move through empty space, like out in space? So what do sound waves move through? And let's get that lined up and ready to go. So um, if you thought that sound waves can only, can't, I mentioned the empty space thing. If you thought sound waves can't move through the empty space between like us and the sun, um, but they can move through the matter here on earth, solids, liquids, and gases, then you're right. Um, so sound waves are waves that have to have matter to move through, to move energy through. They need, we call that a medium. And um, those are called mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are waves that need matter, or a medium, to move through in order to transfer the energy. And so um, in the case of me talking right now, where I'm moving, it's going from the solid of my vocal cords out of my mouth, through the microphone and then eventually to your ears and so we've got a transfer between solids and gases happening um, and it's kind of a thing where we can move um, it, any, as long as there's molecules to move through we can transfer from one form to another so in this um, tuning fork clearly a solid there's a repeating pattern of, ener of energy mo movement of, of motion that's moving the energy rather um, and it's vibrating my hand. I can feel it vibrating, but it's clearly going to the air molecules around it. That's why we can hear it. So we can show that um, by using this ping pong ball here as a giant air molecule. And what I can do is I can put it next to the tuning fork, but then if I have the tuning fork vibrating first, we should see some movement of the ping pong ball. You see the ping pong ball is just definitely getting that energy and it's causing it to move and if we had other ping pong balls it could hit it would move down the line just like it does in air molecules eventually gets to our ear and we hear the sound and because it needs the molecules it is a mechanical wave but there's something else about sound waves that's, that are interesting and I can show you with a slinky all right all right, so we know that sound waves are mechanical because they need matter, but they're another type of wave as well, and it's because of the way they move. So let's pretend that these are air molecules all kind of in a row. Usually, you know, air molecules don't just line up like this, but eventually they will hit from one to the next. We'll pretend these are air molecules, each coil of the slinky. And if I send energy down the line, You can kind of see where it gets dark. That is a, what we call a compression. That's where the slinky has come together and it's sending the energy down the line that way. So when I do this, watch that like dark spot. And those are compressions. And that makes this a compressional wave. And I'll tell you why it's compression in a minute, but part of it has to do with the fact that the, the um, matter comes together, moves apart, comes together, moves apart. And so if we had a couple waves on here, you would see that we have compression, compression. In the middle, they're, they're spread apart more. And where they're spread apart more the most is called a rarefaction. And where they're together the most, we call that a compression. And these waves move th like in this direction, right? Back and forth. And the energy, the, the um, slinkies move in this way. And the energies move in this way. And we call those parallel directions. And they, that's why this is called, that, that's the, the characteristic of a compressional wave. These are waves where the matter vibrates by pushing together, moving apart, parallel to the direction in which the wave travels. So it's, they're, they're moving in the same direction, the wave itself and the matter. All right, I'll show you one more time on here. Oh. And we have a slide that we can show with sound waves. Sound waves are molecules, so they're not connected like the slinky wave, but they are moving together, moving apart, moving together, moving apart. And you can see that on the slide there. You can see where they're together, that's the compression. That place where they're apart the most is the rarefaction. And then if we measure from one, one compression to the next, that's a wavelength, or we can do one uh, rarefaction to the next. But that's the way that we, we think about sound waves. So sound waves are mechanical waves that move as compressional, move energy as compressional waves, right? Make sense? 
All right, so that's the sound wave part of this, and then we have the light part of this. And light is a little bit different. Now, um, so with light, we ask the question, what do sound waves move through? Um, think about this, what do light waves move through? Do, do they move through matter? Can they move through empty space? Or can they move through both of these? So think about it for just a second. All right, if you're thinking, oh well, I know that we get light from the sun, therefore it has to move through empty space. You're definitely right. And then you might be thinking also, well, you, you, I can see you, you're in a room where there's air molecules, so clearly it can move through matter. You're right, it's both. And that is a type of wave called an electromagnetic wave. And electromagnetic waves are waves that can travel through matter or empty space where there is no matter. And that's what, when we say empty space, that's what we mean, not like an empty room, but empty space meaning there's no matter there like between us and the sun. All right, so light is an electromagnetic wave. And I've got this poster behind me that have a, has a bunch of different electromagnetic waves. We call this elect the electromagnetic spectrum. This is the spectrum of energy that comes from the sun. Um, and it goes from really long waves to really short waves over here. And you can see these waves they're not like the sound waves moving like this, but they're they kind of this shape, or you can do this. They're like this shape. And I want to show this kind, of, this kind of wave to you over here. We have another wave machine. This is our electronic wave machine. This is a motorized version. And we have a, um, like a pulley wheel here. We have um, a motor here that's moving the wheel. And then we have a chain that's being moved over that wheel. And if I pull the chain out, this way, and you look from right about here to here, you can see we get these really cool looking shapes happening, and this is what a light wave looks like. And we can see that I am moving the chain this way, and then the energy is moving this way, and these are perpendicular directions, and that makes us a transverse wave. Transverse waves are waves in which the matter or the medium is moving in a perpendicular direction to the movement of the energy. And that's pretty cool. And these have a crest and a trough. So in this case, we're going to say the crest is the part that's coming out, the trough is the part that's going in. And we'll take a picture of that in just a little bit. But um, we can measure those. And if, if the crest and trough are, are bigger, then that means there's more energy in the way. Oh, caught the chain when it fell off there. All right. But if they're bigger, that means there's if the amplitude's bigger, that means it's got more energy in the way. We can also think about something called frequency, and that so we would say a point. So let's say my hand is the point. We can measure how many waves past the point in a certain amount of time. So we can do like three waves in a row there. So we call it a frequency of three. And then if I did it faster. We can get maybe five waves there, or you can do slower and only get maybe one and a half waves in the same amount of time. We call that frequency, and frequency is important when it comes to light waves, and we'll show that in just a second. Let me turn this off, and we'll move back over here. All right, frequency is important. So uh, let's define transverse waves again before I talk about that frequency. So transverse waves are waves in which the particles move in a direction perpendicular to the movement of the wave. And that's what we showed over there. And we have a picture of this. So our wave was going up and down, but we're going to do this. This is normally how you see it with more in the horizontal way here. So the crest is that top part of the wave, that middle line, that red line, that we call that the midline. And we can, we can actually measure to the crest to that. And that's our amplitude. Or we can measure from the trough to that line or the line to the trough. And that gives us also the amplitude. Um, and then if we measure from crest to crest or trough to trough, that gives us wavelength. And um, again, the amount of waves that pass a point in a certain amount of time, that is our frequency. And that brings us back to this poster behind me. Um, the electromagnetic waves, this spectrum, has a changing wavelength or changing frequency as you go throughout. Higher energy is going to be on this side where we just have more of the waves getting, getting to a point in a certain amount of time, so more of that energy. And then on the other side, we have the longer waves. That means there's less waves getting there, and so they have less energy. And this spectrum is important because we're talking about light, right? You can see light is right here in the middle, that visible light spectrum. You see that rainbow? Um, and light's happening right here. And that is just one of these energies. It's kind of that middle energy. 
Um, on either side, you see we have ultraviolet infrared. Ultraviolet is just the other side of violet, and um, that's higher energy. Infrared is just on the other side of red, and that's lower energy. So going this way, we have lower energy waves, higher energy waves this way. And this area is where we, I mean, actually all of this down here, this is where we have a lot of things that we use in our daily lives. And that come back to that communication piece. Um, but I'll, I'll look at this one more time in a second. But let's, let's talk about this really fast. So we can use things like, we can use electromagnetic energy for communication. And that's what's happening here. So when we have the sound, the, you know, the, the electrical impulses that are coming through here, sound, and we take them through here, what we're doing is we're changing that electrical impulse into a light wave through here. And we're going to call this our transmitter. So whatever sends out the information is our, the, the, the wave energy is going to be the transmitter. And then we have another device that will have a receiver that can receive the energy. And in this case, it's a solar panel that can turn those light impulses back into electrical impulses. Those are the same things that were being sent to this speaker when we unplugged it. And that's why we can get the sound over here. It's because now we're taking those same impulses to a different speaker. But we're doing that because this is set up as a receiver. So transmitter sends the signal, receiver receives the signal, and that's what's happening in our um, electric, ele electronic devices that we talked about earlier, cell phones and Bluetooth speakers and these things. These are all electromagnetic wave um, situations where we have a transmitter and receiver. And this little band right here, that you can see, and then we can, yeah, let's move back to the slide. So, I don't know if you can see, but if you look, so radio waves are here, microwaves are here, and if you look, there's a little white band right here. This is called high, these are uh, radio waves, these are higher frequency than radio waves, lower frequency than microwaves, but we call these radio frequency waves. And this is where cell phones are happening, matter of fact, this is where some of the microwave technology happens. And Bluetooth happens, Wi-Fi happens, all in this range. Matter of fact, if you look at some of the devices you have, you'll see where it has, it says RF and some information about that. That's radio frequency. That's, that's shorthand for radio frequency. And what's happening is we have something set up as a transmitter and something set up as a receiver. So if we can go back to the camera here. So with my cell phone, if I had some Bluetooth headphones on and I set, uh, you pair with them, right? You know how to do this. Now, when you're pairing, what you're doing is you're setting up the, the headphones as the receiver and you're setting your cell phone up as the transmitter and then it's sending those radio frequency waves between them and you're able to use them. And that's how that works. It's pretty cool. All right. And so I hope you learned something about how technology works, but also a lot about waves and how we use those waves for that technology. And um, we hope to see you next time for our next lesson, and we're going to talk about wave behavior, so check that one out. All right, bye.